manonood! Mamangha! At matuto! SDO Kalookan! Learning in Virtual Engagement CIT Live! Hey class, so my name is Mr. Paul Michael S. Bernardo from Casarelan High School and I will be your guide in Week 1 MAPE module. Hey, hey, hey class. Well today, let's talk about music. Well, we all love music, right? Because music can affect our feelings. Sometimes it makes us sad or just listening at it diba giging senti tayo kung di naman tayo sad sometimes it make us cry sobra nakaka-relate and of course relax syempre happy sobra sobra ang daming emotion ang binibigay sa atin ng music but today let's talk about the elements of music so what are the elements of music so the first one is rhythm, the element of time. Under nun is yung beat, meter, and tempo. Isa-isayin muna natin sila. So the first one is beat. Well, beat is the regular pulse of the music. Parang tibok ng puso. Diba? May beat yun. Well, the next one is meter. Hindi naman ibig sabihin nun metro ng taxi, no? Well, pag sinabi natin meter, ito yung haba o yung long. It means the duration on how long the sound or silent lasts. Kung gano'n siya kahaba, tinutugtog. The next one is tempo. It is the speed and how fast or slow yung music based on the beat. Diyan ngayon papalo yung time signature which is yung 2-4, 3-4, at 4-4. Which is pag sinabing 2-4, ito yung fast, normal naman 3-4, at 4-4 ang slow. Next is dynamic. Dynamic is the loudest or the quietness of the music. Kung gano'n siya kalakas or kahina. The next one is melody. Melody is a spying sequence of note collectively. So ito naman yung pagkakasunod-sunod o yung pagkakaayos ng mga note kung paano siya tumutugto. And here's a short example kung paano yung melody. Gets? Now, the next one ay tinatawag natin Harmony Harmony under ito yung pitches and chords Doon muna tayo sa pitches Pitches is the degree of highness or the lowness of the tone Kung gaano kataas yung boses niya or kababa yung boses ng kumakanta Next is yung chords Chords is a combination of three notes providing as accompaniment to the music. Example nito, itong maririnig nyo. C major. A major chord is made up of note 1, note 3, and note 5. Or in other words, the first note, the third note, to be exact, the major third, and the fifth note. In our case, that's going to be C, E, and G. That's the first, third, major third, and fifth. There you go, you just learnt your first chord C major. If you just played this chord uh, like this every single time, it would sound a bit naff and a bit boring. So you can change which order these three notes are played in. If we shift the C up an octave, we keep the other two the same, it looks like this. So we've shifted the C up and we're starting the chord on the E. It's still the same notes. I'm playing the same notes but just in a different order. This is called the first inversion of C major. Okay, so that's your normal chord. First inversion is that. 
And then if, we, then if we shift the E up an octave, we'll keep the other two the same there. That's the second inversion. And then if we do that once more, we're back to the beginning again. And it's probably a better idea to just play the root note, that's the first note, in octaves if you want, with the left hand. So say I wanted to play a C major chord with my right hand and my left hand, I'd play the chord with my right hand, and then the root note with my left hand, maybe octaves. And that sounds really full and complete. Sounds really good. Now, you can also play the fifth note in your left hand and it still sounds pretty good. However, if you start adding the third note into your left hand, that's adding in your E, then it starts to sound a little bit weird and a little bit rubbish. Sounds not quite right. So it's a good idea to keep the third in your right hand. Uh, that might change a little bit later on in a couple of lessons, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So uh, here's an example of this. If uh, I play the root note and the fifth note in my left hand, and then I play the third with my right hand, we come out with this chord. That's your C major chord but just uh, played not in the same order as you saw earlier, but still sounds really nice, sounds really complete. The next one is texture. Texture refers to the numbers of melodies some music. Meron siyang tatlong uri. So the first one is monophonic. Ibig sabihin nun, isang melody lang yung tumutugtog. The second one is yung homophonic. Ibig sabihin, Meron siyang isang melody at merong isang accompaniment. And syempre, lastly, yung polyphonic. Polyphonic consisting of two or more melodies accompanied by chords. Ibig sabihin, mas marami na yung melodies at mas marami na yung accompaniment. Lastly, timbre or timbre is the character or quality of musical sound or voice. At meron siyang apat na uri sa boses. Soprano is the highest female voice. Alto is the lowest female voice. So lalaki naman, tenor naman ang pinakamataas sa boses. At syempre, yung pinakapaborito ko, yung bass, which is yung lowest male voice. Now that we are done on our recap about the different elements of music, let's proceed to our lesson for this day. Philippines Let's have a brief history about the Philippines. So, the Philippines was colonized by the Spaniards for 333 years, as well as other countries. That's why we have rich in culture, tradition, because of the influence of the different countries that colonized us. Now let's talk about the Lowland Luzon. Mag-focus lang tayo ngayon sa characteristics ng music ng Lowland Luzon. Music is reflected in their daily life. Ibig sabihin, yung musika nila, pinapakita na to, yung daily life nila o yung ginagawa nila pang araw-araw. The style and form of Philippine music are product of Western and traditional folk music. Because as I've said earlier, we've been colonized by different countries. So we have two types of music in Lowland Luzon. The first one is a sacred music, which means these kinds of music are influenced by religious. And the other one is what we call Secular music. Secular music refers to music that is not religious in nature or non-religious music. So there is also known as hawk music or tinatawag natin awiting bayan. Now our next topic is all about instrumental music or the brass band instrument. So the brass band instrument ay meron tatlong uri. So the first one ay tinatawag natin woodwind, the second one is brass wind, and the third one is percussion. Let's talk about first the woodwind instrument. So when we say woodwind instrument, based on itself, pangalan niya, it's made from wood or the combination of wood or metal, just like a clarinet. A piccolo. And a flute. The next one is brass instrument, an instrument that made from brass or a copper. Example are the following trombone, a sisophone, saxophone, and a French horn. And the third one 
is the percussion instrument. These are type of instrument that need to be strike, beat, or tap to create a short vibration. A bass drum. Snare drum. and a symbol. Pangkat Gawayan Also known as the Singing Bamboo of the Philippines Pangkat Gawayan is an orchestra that plays music using non-traditional bamboo instrument or an instrument made from a bamboo. So before we proceed to the different Gawayan instrument, let's talk about first the hornball style such. These are the different classification of instrument na kinabibilangan ng aerophones, cordophones, idiophones, membranophone, at electrophone. So discuss muna natin sila one by one para mas madali natin siyang maintindihan. The first one is aerophone. The word itself, aero and phone. When we say aero, it means a wind. So these instruments needs wind or air para magamit mo siya. The second one is a chord of horns. The word itself, chords, these kinds of instrument produce sound through its vibrating strings, through strumming motion or plucking. The third one is an idiophone. These kinds of instrument need to be shaked or tapped to create a small vibration. Next is a membranophone. Produce sound primarily by the way of vibrating the stretch membrane. The last one is electrophone, produce sound which are generated by electricity. Now that we are done discussing the classification of instrument, let's proceed now to the different instrument used by the pangkat kawayan. So the first instrument is ang glue, a bamboo rattle tubes attached to a frame. So let's see class kung natutunan natin yung classification of instrument. Alin kaya siya dun sa dalawa? Is it idiophones or a membranophones? Idiophones. Tama. Kasi ang instrument na to ay kailangan alugit or itap para makapag-create ng sound. Next is a pan pipes. A small piece of bamboo in graduated small tube produce a sound by blowing. Anong classification of instrument kaya siya? Ito ba ay idiophones or an aeropones? Tama. Siya ay aeropones kasi itong instrument na to, ay kailangan gamitan ng hangin para siya ay matutog. The next one is kalago. It's a wind instrument that produces a hollow gong-like sound. Sa ang classification kaya siya na babagay? Siya ba ay membranophone or an idiophone? Ito ay idiophones kasi siya ay tinatap lang or in strike to create a sound. Hindi tulad ng membranophone na kailangan merong stretch membrane to create a sound. And the following instrument are classified also as idiophones. Kalatok, also known as a bamboo knocker, is a percussion instrument made of pieces of bamboo that are strung together. And the last one is the lungating. A bamboo marimba is made from bamboo that follows the musical scale and style of a typical xylophone. Kinala mo ba ang mga nag-compose sa mga kantang tulad ng Bahay Kubo, Laron Laron Sinta, at iba pa mga kantahin natin nung tayo ay bata pa? Sila ang tinatawag nating folk songs. Ang folk songs, madalas hindi natin kilala kung saan nag-originate o kung sino ang nag-compose nung kanta na ito. Ang folk songs ay nahat sa dalawang salita, folk and songs. Pag sinabi nating folk, ito ay mga tao, people, a group of people, a community, or bayan. At songs, ibig sabihin ito ay kanta, musika, Awitin. So pag pinagsama natin ng folk songs, ang ibig sabihin nito sa Tagalog ay mga awiting bayan. Ang awiting bayan may iba't ibang karakteristik. Ang una dyan, ang folk songs ay pwedeng kantayin sa iba't ibang dialecto. Another karakteristik of folk songs ay minimiro na to yung daily life nila o yung pang-araw-araw nilang trabaho. At tulad kayo na, tinan ko kayo kung kilala nyo ang mga tumugtog o nag-compose ng kantang Laron-Laron Sinta o Bahay Kuku. Well, that is one of the characteristics of folk songs. Hindi natin kilala kung sino yung nag-compose talaga ng kanta na yun. Another characteristic of folk songs is short and simple. Maikli lang siya at madali lang siyang sundin. 
At ang huli sa karakteristik ng folk songs, pinapasa ito verbally or orally sa mga close family relatives or sa part of a community. Now that we know the different characteristics of folk songs, let's have a short activity. Alam nyo ba yung larong... But today, tatawagin natin siyang Mappy K, the 10 bonus points video ke challenge. Are you ready, class? So, subukan yung kantay ng si Philemon at alamin yung mga nakatakip na lyrics. Nakuha ba ng tama ang mga sagot? Subukan naman natin dito ngayon sa susunod na kanta. Ang galing nyo pala magsikanta. Pero, as always, lahat ng bagay ay may katapusan. Hanggang sa muli, ako inyong lingkod, Mr. Paul Michael S. Bernardo from Kasalanan High School, signing out. <music>